Hey guys, since it's the beginning of a new year and my first new year on the channel, I thought it'd be fun to look at projects coming out in 2023 and rank my most anticipated ones. I have a top 10 most anticipated along with 7 honourable mentions which could have been longer but I really really needed to cut down time. So I'll give you them just before we get to our number one spot. I'd also like to take this quick opportunity to tell you that I'm now an official writer and critic at the Oscar project. I recently reviewed the menu so if you're interested the link will be in the pinned comment. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so at number 10 we have Asteroid City. As far as we know, this is going to be a romantic comedy set in the 50s from one of my favourite filmmakers, Wes Anderson. It's being co-written by Roman Coppola, son of Francis Ford Coppola, and co-writer of other Wes Anderson projects such as Moonrise Kingdom and The Darjeeling Limited. Now, Wes Anderson is one of those filmmakers where even when you don't enjoy one of their projects, it's always a worthwhile time. There's something especially unique in every Anderson film, and when it comes to this film that should be releasing June time, something about it is capturing me. It could be the title, which sounds magically adventurous, it could be that it's a romance, which is my second favourite genre, or it could be the absolute stacked cast. Now, every Anderson film has a good cast, but let me just read you just a fraction of this one. Tilda Swinton, Adrian Brody, Tom Hanks, Margot Robbie, Scarlett Johansson, Brian Cranston, Jeff Goldblum, Maya Hawke, Edward Norton, Steve Carell, as well as a ton of others and some regular collaborators in Willem Dafoe and Jason Schwartzman. There is no denying that this cast is full to the brim with talent and worth seeing for that alone. The reason it's all the way back at 10 is because we know very little about this film. There's no trailer or even any details. Just a few behind the scenes pictures and what I've already told you. So moving on to 9, we have Killers of the Flower Moon, which is going to be a Martin Scorsese film starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro and Brendan Fraser. We know a bit more about this film simply because it's based off a book of the same title, but essentially it's a film about the FBI in the 1920s during a murder investigation of the Osage tribe. Extremely rich concept and when you have a legend like Scorsese making a movie, you sit there and you watch it. De Niro and Scorsese is one of my favourite director actor duos and some of their collaborations have created some of my favourite movies of all time in the Irishman, The King of Comedy and Raging Bull. Leo always brings it, especially in Scorsese projects and it's always great to see Brendan Fraser. Coming off the back of The Irishman, it does make me slightly nervous since that was the perfect swan song for all those involved, especially De Niro and Scorsese and even more so for their collaborative efforts. However, I simply cannot say no to anything new these guys throw at me, so I'll be there opening night. At 8 we have a film we actually have a trailer to, the Super Mario Bros movie which has magically made its way from one of my most dreaded to my 8th most anticipated. Listen, the idea of Chris Pratt playing my favourite video game character still makes me nauseous, but as a huge Mario fan, the trailers and clips look great. When the initial announcement was made and they said we was getting a Mario movie starring Chris Pratt made by Illumination Studios, I nearly threw up, but it genuinely looks like it's going to be amazing. Now, I'm cautiously optimistic, but between the gorgeous visuals, the music homages, Jack Black as Bowser and the funny little easter eggs, I feel less crazy saying this movie looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I want to see this in the cinema, but no doubt there will be a million children seeing it, which is fair, but also will ruin my experience, so I may have to wait for it to come out on Blu-ray or something. Or alternatively, I could just go to a ridiculously early screening on a weekday because fuck them kids. At 7 we have Knock at the Cabin which is the new M. Night Shyamalan thriller and granted I haven't seen old but I definitely intend on seeing this. Shyamalan is a director who is incredibly hit or miss. He has made some of my favourite films of all time and some of my least favourite films of all time but for some reason this is striking a chord with me. 
Maybe it's because it's him, maybe it's because the trailer and premise seem intriguing, or maybe it's the fact that we have Dave Batista and Rupert Grint teaming up, which is an unruly attack on my childhood brain. We have Ron Weasley and fucking Batista in an M. Night Shyamalan thriller. You couldn't sell this movie any more to me if you tried. I don't have much to say because there's not much more reason I'm excited, but really quick. Dave Batista has been absolutely crushing it lately and I'm very interested in where his career goes from here. He's pushing the boundaries of what a wrestler turned actor can do and what's expected of them much more than The Rock ever has. And though John Cena is genius in Peacemaker, he hasn't been doing much otherwise, whereas Batista has been in a huge variety of films and played an entirely different character in each. And this seems like another example of that. So that being said, at 6 we have 65. Not much to say but we got Adam Driver and we got dinosaurs. What more could somebody want? With Sam Raimi producing, Danny Elfman on the music and the writers of A Quiet Place both writing and directing it, I have so much faith in this film. Plus, with Jurassic World Dominion being as shitty as it is and Fallen Kingdom before it, we are truly in need of good dinosaur content because no matter how old you are, you're going to admit it, dinosaurs are fucking cool. So when you grab one of the best modern actors and put him in a sci-fi thriller film set 65 million years ago, well then you got a recipe for perfection. Plus, it comes out near my birthday, so I very much plan on going to see it for my birthday with my girlfriend, and hopefully it's as amazing as I need it to be. Entering our top 5 we have Renfield, which the trailer 2 just dropped the other day. I had this at 6 initially until I saw that trailer and damn. I mean, come on, Nicolas Cage playing Dracula in a I hate my boss comedy movie starring Nicholas Holt? There is zero way this movie is going to suck. I have so much faith in this film being at least good and at most insanely enjoyable. Nicolas Cage playing ridiculous characters is one of my favourite genres, including when he played himself, so when you got him playing not only a vampire, but the most famous vampire in all of fiction, you have a certified banger on your hands. Nicholas Holt, who recently starred in The Menu, is slowly becoming one of my favourite contemporary actors. He's had a lot of roles before this, but I'm hoping this film can truly define him as a leading man because he definitely has the chops for it, but honestly, we all know we're here for Cage Dracula. At fourth, we have Cocaine Bear. No, this is not a meme. I am genuinely as excited for this film as the memes are pretending to be. It has an absolute batshit insane premise and the poster goes so fucking raw for such a dumb idea. It's been directed by Elizabeth Banks, so I feel like it's going to be very self-aware of how crazy it is, and I'm beyond excited for this. The trailer is funny, and though Banks' directorial efforts aren't too impressive previously, I'm hoping this will change that. Also, ever since finding out that Ray Liotta's last acting credit was going to be in a film called Cocaine Bear, I've been devilishly anticipating this, and I hope it doesn't let me down. Because the way I see it, it'll either be a genuinely good black comedy, or it'll be a so dumb and bad film it's good. I can truly appreciate a shitty film, so even if it's that, I'm all in on it. It is based on a true story, but sadly, in the true story, the bear just took the cocaine and died. There was no coked up rampage, sadly. At third, we have one I feel a lot of people have been anticipating, Barbie. Greta Gerwig with her take on Barbie starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, I cannot describe to you the hype. The imagery, the cast, the director, the 2001 homage, the behind the scenes photos and the fact it's being co-written by Noah Baumbach, it just feels like a fever dream. I'm avoiding as much as I can about the film, but if it's anything on the level of Barbie as the Princess and the Pauper, I think we're in for a golden time. This film has been through the ringer, and people have been trying to get it made for as far back as like 2009. Anne Hathaway was originally tied to it, and then also Amy Schumer, which I'm very thankful fell through. Sony was going to make it, and Universal was going to make it, and then we finally landed with Warner Bros. It's been a very long ride for this concept, but all it took was Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach to get it done. 
unnaturally hyped and yes I will be going to see this at the cinema opening night. In second place we have a bit of an odd one but when you finish saving the world. This initially premiered at Sundance in 2022 but it isn't being officially released till January 2023 this month. Written and directed by Jesse Eisenberg based on the book of the same title also written by Jesse Eisenberg this seems like a very interesting concept for him to be doing. I'm glad to see him moving on in his career to take a more higher position in Hollywood and with this being his feature directorial debut I hope he gets reviewed better through its wide release than its festival showings. It currently sits on a 3 star on Letterboxd which isn't bad but also a barely fresh score on Rotten Tomatoes which all my homies hate Rotten Tomatoes anyway but it still sucks to see. It stars Finn Wolfhard and Julianne Moore and Wolfhard is one of those Stranger Things actors I can see really shaking off that name and reputation. He seems to be going in his own direction outside of the show and has the best chance at being an incredible actor in the future. Julianne Moore is just lovely and is golden in everything you see her in even if the film isn't the best. Being distributed by A24, I have hoped that this coming of age comedy drama reaches its potential upon release but I doubt I'll be able to see it in theatres since not many A24 24 films make it over here but we'll see. Now before we get to our number one spot we have a few honourable mentions. Firstly we have Scream 6 which is the second instalment of the new Scream run and though I had my doubts when it was announced the posters and the trailer that dropped seem quite good. The fact is I'm a sucker for horror and a bigger sucker for Scream. I fear the franchise might be out of steam but I hope it isn't. With Jenna Ortega returning as well as a bunch of other actors from previous installments, cast wise everything seems good. It just seemed that Scream 5 was such a good send off for the franchise and that a 6th might be excessive. But we'll see, I'm still pretty excited to see it. Next we have Oppenheimer which I know a lot of people are looking forward to. My only issue keeping it from the top 10 is that me and Nolan have a very strange relationship. Most of his films I can look at and say they are incredible but I personally don't love a lot of them. I love very few. But this film looks great and the fact that he set off a real nuke to get it done I gotta appreciate that. Our next honourable mention is Megan which releases very soon and I will be going to see it I hope. PG-13 horror is certainly underrated and I think this film is going to be extremely funny in one sense and truly terrifying in another. Next we have Creed 3 which if you know me you know I'm a huge fan of the Rocky franchise and by extension the Creed films. I love that Michael B Jordan is taking the reins as a director on this one and Jonathan Majors is coming in as the antagonist but the blatant exclusion of Sylvester Stallone as Rocky after he should have died in the first Creed film but they stupidly choose not to is blasphemy and honestly disrespectful indecision. However, I will still be all in on this film and very excited to see it. Next is Maestro, not much to say about why I'm excited but this is Bradley Cooper's second film directing and it's produced by Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg. The cast looks great and considering how well directed A Star Is Born was, I have high hopes for Cooper in this one. Next we have Infinity Pool because it's a horror film from Brandon Cronenberg, son of David Cronenberg, starring Mia Goth, who we know I love. Brandon Cronenberg has previously made Antiviral and Possessor which are both fantastic and I'm looking forward to another addition in his filmography. Finally our last honourable mention is Maxine. Now the only reason this is an honourable mention and not literally number one is because the date is not confirmed. It may not arrive in 2023 but I have a sneaking suspicion it will be. Mia Goth returning for her third film with Ty West in the X trilogy, I cannot overstate my anticipation for this film. X and Pearl both made it to my best of 2022 list and I have no doubts this will reach the top 10 of 2023 if it does release this year. And with that said we move to our number one most anticipated film of 2023, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse is possibly my favourite film of all time give or take a few options and I'm the biggest Spider-Man shill in the movie reviewing business. I have a Spider-Man tattoo, specifically a Miles Morales one and as soon as this film was announced I've been starving for it. 
The cast is phenomenal, but I'd be lying if I said Nick Cage not returning as Spider-Man Noir didn't suck. The trailer looks incredible, and I know we've been loaded with multiverse movies and concepts lately, but this is one I can truly get behind. The visuals of the first film were revolutionary, and you've seen so many animated films since take a similar approach, even most recently with Puss in Boots The Last Wish, but I'm counting on this film to do it better and to do it better than the first time. And considering the trailer, I have all the faith it will. This character and this world mean so much to me and I am on a constant high thinking about it. I listen to the last film's soundtrack constantly and still do at times and I'm hoping this film gives me more songs to add to my playlist. I get a dose of serotonin every single time I see anything about this film and that's why it's my most anticipated film of 2023. And that's it, so let me know what your most anticipated films of the year are, let me know what you thought of mine, what you thought of the video, and I hope in the new year that you, as always, keep watching movies.